Whenever you have a period of breathing difficulty with asthma, whether it's coughing or it's wheezing or chest tightness, your ability to help to reduce your symptoms are going to be based on two factors. One is your everyday control pause. If your everyday control pause is 20 seconds or plus, it's a lot easier to stop your symptoms by doing breathing recovery. In other words, the small breath tool exercise. But if your control pause is 10 seconds and you have symptoms, it's more challenging to stop your symptoms by doing breathing recovery. So by improving your control pause to above 20 seconds, it gives you a much better degree of control over your asthma. And also when you do have symptoms, your asthma severity is going to be less so that it's easier to control your symptoms using the breathing recovery exercises. Over the years since 2002, I would have worked with thousands of people with asthma. And in classes, we often have people get into difficulty. They start coughing in class, they start wheezing. And we use the, the breathing recovery exercise there and then to help to, to bring out of symptoms. It doesn't always work. You know, it has a success rate of about 70%. But that success rate is based on two principles. One, the higher your normal everyday control pause, the easier it is to stop symptoms. Number two, the sooner you commence doing the breathing recovery exercise at the first signs of symptoms, the easier it is to stop symptoms. So you can imagine, if the airways are narrowing, they're becoming inflamed, you're feeling that your breathing is not quite right, you're starting to cough, you're starting to wheeze, that in turn then is causing your breathing to be faster and harder, which in turn then is feeding into your symptoms. And really with the breathing recovery exercise, we want to stop this cycle. We want to stop the pattern of hyperventilation, faster and harder, upper chest breathing, mouth breathing, feeding into symptoms. With the breathing recovery exercise, there are two versions of it. One is breathing in and out and holding your breath for about three to five seconds and then normally breathing for about two to three breaths or 10 to 15 seconds and repeating the breath hold again for between three and five seconds and then having normal breathing for 10 to 15 seconds or two to three breaths and you can continue with that. Or the second variation is you breathe in, breathe out, you hold your breath for between three and five seconds and then you breathe normally for two to three breaths or 10 to 15 seconds and then you repeat again for say three to five seconds and then normal breathing for 10 to 15 seconds. And then you increase it incrementally. So you might increase the next one then to six seconds. And you repeat six seconds of a breath hold and then you do seven seconds, you repeat seven seconds. And you go all the way up to about 10 seconds and then you go back down nine seconds, eight seconds, seven seconds, six seconds. So just bear in mind when you do have breathing difficulty, the sooner you start doing the exercise at the first signs of symptoms, start doing the breath hold straight away. And if you don't stop your symptoms within about 10 minutes, take your salbutamol. However, if you're having a severe attack, take your salbutamol straight away. So if, you're, if you've got a period of breathing difficulty that's quite severe, don't even wait for the breathing exercises. Take your salbutamol. But after you take your salbutamol, which is your ventilum, it's a bronchodilator, it's a rescue medication, then do the many small breath holes. So do breathing recovery after you take your salbutamol. But you will find that as your control pause increases, that you will have significantly reduced symptoms. That in many instances, by practicing the breathing recovery exercise, you can have to bring your symptoms under control. There's a tremendous psychological tool here because when you're able to stop your symptoms of wheeze and cough and chest tightness by doing the breathing recovery exercise, it will give you a tremendous sense of control over your asthma, knowing that you have some tools there that in addition to your medication, it will help to improve your asthma control and it also helps to reduce your reliance on medication and of course that's done with your, with your family doctor.